Hello, friends. Welcome to this uh, conference where we are releasing this work, which is before you. Uh, your, the question really will arise that what are the needs for this? And why do we believe, why does our group feel that we are committed to try and propagate this idea or popularize this idea? As you know, we are all, as Indians, greatly proud of the fact that we are not only the world's largest democracy, but in many ways, also one of its leading democracies in the institutional framework which we have built for ourselves. Of course, each institutional framework, and there's no democracy that is perfect, has its shortcomings, it's also its advantages. But ours has stood the test of 70 years. At the heart of this democratic process is, of course, the fact that we have open, free elections, and over the years, our election commission has earned a stature of, of the world as an organization that ensures that these elections are free and fair. Recently, however, there have been disturbing questions, particularly with the improvement of technology and the adoption of fresh technology as to how free and fair these elections remain. So we thought it was our duty as citizens of India and as those who had been given the responsibility of serving the country at the core of its administration for many years, to look into what this was. And there are questions that remain. And these questions are placed before you. Not only you, of course, you are primarily from the press, the fourth estate, but before the people of India. Because the people of India have to judge. Understand, please, that a true democracy is one where the people are fully participants. That's why transparency and accountability is indispensable to the working of a democracy. Is our election process fully transparent, fully accountable? That is the question we have put with this study. Thank you all. For a democracy to function effectively, fair and credible elections are crucial. It is well known that vested interests try to subvert elections so that they can continue to manipulate them for their own ends. Subversion implies that representation of people is undermined. Consequently, people's interests do not get represented in the legislatures. India has transited from a ballot box vote to an electronic voting system. It was hoped that this would eliminate manipulation that was taking place in the earlier system. However, doubts have been raised about the reliability of the electronic voting system itself. These doubts need to be addressed and a better system needs to be devised. That will ensure the citizens about India's democracy and their representation in the legislatures. The CCE report now being released is a step in that direction. It helps understand what a foolproof election system can be and shows that it is doable. A functioning democracy in which the will of the citizens is not subverted will not only speed up development, but also make its fruits more widely available. Currently with our subverted democracy, the common people are marginalized. Gains of development accrue to a small minority with consequent growing inequality, which in turn has led to a slowing economy, growing unemployment and social discord. The black economy that inevitably follows from subverted elections leads to policy failures all around, like in education, health, physical infrastructure, etc. The result is inefficiency and economy performing below its potential. Thus, development goals remain unfulfilled and poverty persists. This report, its wider circulation and implementation are then crucial for India to not only become more democratic, but also a more developed and a civilized nation. Thank you. The electoral process, as we all know, is extremely important. And uh, there have been controversies about the EVMs for quite a while. I personally thought that the EVMs are perfectly all right. But ever since the VVPAT voter verifiable paper audit trail machines came in, there has been some confusion. Uh, for example, in the 2019 Lok Sabha election, the election commission used to put out information about the number of votes polled and the number of votes cast uh, more or less every day. 
and uh, it was noticed that over time these figures number one they changed and number two they did not match so finding that the number of votes cast and the number of votes polled were not exactly the same was quite worrying and uh, when this uh, issue was pointed out to the election commission two very strange things happened one the election commission stopped putting out this information number one uh, number two on the 1st of june 2019 the election commission issued what it called was a clarification which is still available on its website which says uh, amongst other things that uh, the final authenticated results will be available about 2 weeks after the declaration of the result now this is absolutely mind boggling how can the results be declared before authenticated and uh, confirmed data is available so therefore on these two issues we have filed a petition in the supreme court uh, i just want to add that in my opinion the evm vv pat controversy is actually the creation of political parties all of them including the ruling party a few years ago one of the major spokespersons of the ruling parties wrote a book against evms and the then uh, i think deputy prime minister wrote its forward today they are defending it and others are uh, opposing when you win the evm and vv pat are all right but when you lose then they are not all right so this confusion by political parties is what i think has caused severe damage but we must make the system transparent and robust our friends wish we could have been with you today but uh, given the pandemic we had to use the virtual route so do bear with us i speak as a media person like you all and like many of you i'm concerned about the state of the republic the 72nd anniversary of this republic and the constitution has been celebrated but how robust is this republic how enduring are the guarantees made in the constitution like our other rights including the right to freedom of information so central to our work as journalists the right to free and fair elections is central to democracy over the last few years anxiety over whether the electoral system is as credible as the founding persons of the republic had hoped was of course an open question and we have all been grappling with this question most recently in bihar there have been serious allegations of rigging which cast a shadow on the final verdict we know that the jdu uh, bjp government came into power in bihar but there's always that uh, suspicion that the process could have been much better and we could have been sure that this was indeed the result that the people of bihar wanted it's that shadow of doubt that we should remove the threat of the stolen election is too serious for us to ignore today we are on the threshold of elections in four states and one union territory so much is at stake the future shape of the country is being made a part of course from the future of so many parties and candidates given the high stakes battle we have together to ensure that this process is as credible as possible it is with that intent that the citizens commission on elections has put together the report on evms drawing from the collective wisdom of some of the best experts in the world for us as media this is an opportunity to study the infirmities in the system and work collectively to making it a process that does our republic proud so uh, it's actually a, a a journey that we are all making together i hope you all join me in this thank you very much for being here